This video looks at suboptimal dual node algorithms. The previous videos in this chapter assumed that there was a synergy between the embedded terminal mode feedback u equals minus kx and the performance index j. Now, this does make good engineering sense in general, and however, it can lead to some difficulties when you start considering constraint handling, especially where a high performance level is required. <coughs> Consequently, it's worth investigating just for completeness what would happen if the terminal mode feedback within the dual mode approach does not correspond to the underlying cost. Now, you might start making arguments about does this make the performance index ill posed, which is where we've come from in the first place, but let's put that to one side for one minute. Let's consider how we might define a suboptimal dual mode approach. So we're going to take the dual mode predictions as being based around the implementation, and this is the key thing, of an arbitrary regulator and some perturbations. So we've got the same structure as before, but the key thing now is that this K is not necessarily got a synergy with the underlying performance index. So if you like, that K in the terminal mode can be treated like a degree of freedom something you can choose. What we want to do next is optimize predicted performance with respect to the perturbations, so that's these CK terms as before, and implement the first value. So exactly as before, we're trying to minimize a performance index over an infinite horizon with respect to these perturbations. But the only thing we've changed compared to OMPC is we've got a slightly different K. Now, just for completeness, this picture gives you an idea of a typical dual mode paradigm, which is the paradigm we're using. You assume that you've got some initial state, can be out here, and what you do is you say for the first NC steps, so that's from here to it could be somewhere like here, for the first NC steps, you're going to use u equals minus kx plus c, and then for some time after that, you're just going to use u equals minus kx. So you have two modes in your behaviors or in your predictions, and that's why it's called dual mode. Some background then. The earlier videos derived the algebra for computing the performance index, assuming the predictions are based on perturbations about feedback u equals minus kx. Let's take our performance index, then j. There it is, an infant and up and performance index with a Q and an R. Now, what we found is if you use the prediction structure that we showed on the first slide, you can rewrite this J in terms of a quadratic on X, quadratic, uh, some cross terms between X and C, and quadratic in C. And we showed how you could find these matrices SX, SXC, and SC. And in particular, the algebra you needed is summarized here where you'll notice we have to define this psi matrix, that psi comes in here, and then you substitute that psi matrix in, you solve these identities down here, and from that you get S, and then S unpacks like this, and from there you get back to your performance index. Now that was covered in video 3, so we're not going to go through it again. Now the key observations. If U equals minus Kx is not the LQR feedback associated to this performance index, then you would no longer expect SXC to equal zero, or indeed, you would no longer expect SC to be diagonal, as we argued in the previous video. SX will still be constant because the arguments for that will be the same. Now, we'll use some numerical examples to reinforce that this is indeed the case. So those are the examples, video four, five, example one, and example three. So we'll go to those now and illustrate what's going on. First of all, then, let's take this example one. So what we'll do is we'll enter a system. There it is. And then we'll calculate these various um, cost functions for some different horizons. So if I do that now, and then what we can do is we can exactly as in the previous video, we can print them all out and see what happens. Now, what's the key thing? If you look at the SXC terms, you'll find they are no longer zero. They have a finite, meaningful value. If you look at the SC terms, you'll see they are no longer diagonal. Now, there's still some form of pattern. You can see we've got the same element in the diagonal, the same element in these off diagonals, but the key thing is they're not 
diagonal. If we look at the SX terms, unsurprisingly, those are the same. If I now go and look at example 3, which is the multivariable example, so let's just enter that one, enter the system, and then do a few different horizons and see what goes on. So let's run those, and then output the files. And what do you notice again? The SXC terms are not zero, as expected. If you look at the SC terms, what do you notice? Well, again, we have the same blocks in the diagonal, so you can see the same blocks, but we have a non-zero off diagonal. You can see that with this rather larger NC here. You see there's the block, and there's the block. So although we've got the same blocks in the diagonals, we're full of non-zero off diagonal terms. And finally, if we go back and look at SX, again, be unsurprising, you'll see that the SX term is the same as you change NC as we expected. OK, so clearly, although there is some structure in SC, um, and that's not unsurprising, <coughs> what you will find is that clearly SC now has non-zero off-diagonal elements, and SXC is not equal to zero. So that's the key observation. It's not the same as with OMPC. So for completeness, we might want to say, all right, in this case, what will the feedback control law be? So we need to go back and minimize j to determine the optimum value of the perturbation terms ck. So there's our performance index. We want to minimize that with respect to ck. So in other words, we're trying to uh, solve this set of equalities here. And consequently, you'll get the optimum value of these perturbation terms c minus sc inverse times sx transposed times xk. Now, what you'll find in this case is the implied perturbation is not zero because we've no longer got the SXC equals zero. So if I put all this together, you'll remember that in the transient mode, this was our predicted feedback law, u equals minus kx plus c. And now I know that c is given by minus SC inverse SXC times XK. So if I extract just the first value, I just want CK from this term up here, and then add that into here, this is what I'm going to get. So basically this E1 transposed, which is I comma zero zero zero, extracts the first block. In other words, it extracts CK. So that's given by this expression here. And then if I put that together, then what you find is my resulting control law is this one at the bottom here. You find you get minus k, that was your original feedback, plus E1 transposed SC inverse SXC times XK. And the key thing here is you'll notice that your feedback has changed. So the consequence of not having a synergy between your terminal mode feedback and your performance index is that when you do your optimization, your feedback law changes. So here's our new feedback law. I've called it K subscript SOMPC, the S standing for suboptimal model predictive control. So again, what we'll do is we'll just go to these same two MATLAB files and calculate this K matrix and have a look what it seems to be. So if I go back and look at example one, and what you will notice is that at the very bottom of example one, we calculate all these KSO MPC matrices. So what I'm going to do is run the whole file, and then we'll see these matrices. And what do you notice? NC equals one. You've got 0 0.0066, 0 0.0409. K equals two. It's moved a little bit, so it's not constant as you change NC. NC equals 3, it seems to be nearly the same, but if I go up to NC equals 10, you'll see it's still changing a little bit. So clearly, this K does depend upon NC, but there seems to be some form of convergence as NC gets larger. If I go to example 3, we have exactly the same um, pattern. You'll see at the very bottom of the file, it calculates these K matrices. So let's run that file. And what do you notice? Okay, for NC equals 1, 
there's your k nc equals 2, do you notice it's changed? So as you change nc, the resulting implied feedback has changed. You go increase nc a bit more, it continues changing. But as you start making nc larger and larger, the changes are getting smaller. And what you'll find is as nc gets very large, this k SOMPC will converge. In fact, it will converge to the LQR feedback associated to your j. So a summary, you can choose the terminal mode u equals minus kx as a feedback which does not correspond to the underlying performance index. Now you might say, well that doesn't seem to make sense, but we'll look at why you might want to do this in a later chapter. In this case, the dual mode MPC optimization will give a non-zero perturbation term even in the unconstrained case because it's seeking to minimize j and clearly SXC is no longer zero. The SOMPC control law for the unconstrained case can be summarized by this control law here. So you'll see it depends upon SC and it depends upon SXC.